Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's much appreciated. And for those of you that haven't subscribed yet, it would be much appreciated and will only take you a second. Thank you. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is typography, uh, which, for those who don't know, is uh, a way of arranging letters, text, words, all kinds of stuff like that, uh, in a way that's clear, legible, easy to um, understand uh, what you're trying to get across, and it's visually appealing too. And we're going to look at that with regard to book covers and why it's super important to get that typography right uh, if you intend on selling more books or even any books at all. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to actually show you three, three simple designs that I've sort of come up with um, just a few minutes ago. It's just a, a, a make-believe book here, but it's just to give you a, a, an example now here's the first cover. The title is up here at the top, which is fine. You can have it wherever you wish. You know, you can have the whole thing set up however you wish. It's your book after all. The author name here, I'm just using mine for now. So we've got Stephen Peel, The Hidden Portal. Now, I mean, that looks clear enough, but is there any impact there? I'm looking at this thing that I've created here mostly, and this, this hand coming up. I'm thinking about buying the book. <laughs> I have to write it first, won't I? Um, right. So, it's quite basic. The problem we've got is the author name. It's right up there, out of the way. It's it's hard to read. You know, and what, um, see, what, what people want to be able to do is, while it's up on the bookshelf or on Amazon or on the internet or whatever, they want to be able to see instantly what the title is. Give them an idea of the book. They want to see, some people, who the author is. Or that there's an author at all. You know, they want to see the details. They want some information. And if it's all muddled up and uh, the fonts are all over the place, then it can be a bit uh, off-putting. So what I would change here is, I mean, the title's fine. Maybe up a bit more into the dark, with it being quite white. And I would use the name, I would make that simple text, like an Arial, or even a Times New Roman, for that. Just something so that I can actually see, but I'd make it bigger. You know, there's, there's really no point in hiding away. So let's have a look at another one. Now here's an example of people getting carried away with the fonts, using something too fancy and not getting the title across. You might be able to see it there. Yeah, I mean, it, you can read it, but um, would you be able to read it for any kind of dis um, distance? What would happen if it was super small on the internet and just a, a thumbnail size? You probably wouldn't be able to work that out. Um, so that's that's really a, a no a no go for that. And here at the bottom, on the right hand side, we have the author name. Now the lettering is not so bad. And by the way, you don't want by say Stephen Peel or author Stephen Peel. You just want Stephen Peel. You just want the name. You don't want written by or any of that rubbish um, because it's a real spoiler. Stephen Peel, I would make it a simple text again, Ariel or Times Roman New, Times New Roman or uh, Goromond or something like that. Just something basic but clear. Uh, set of fonts are quite good for that. But I'll talk about matching these um, these fonts up in a minute because that's super important too having two sets of fonts different but that suit each other now what I've done here is I think that's pretty much the finish for that now I've made the name stand right out I even give a little bit of color because this circle here has got a little bit of cream in it a little bit just just slightly creamy so let's have that almost gold um, and that works, and the little, the little light we've got here is coming through to zero. And I give it obviously a curve to curve around. I'm trying to give it some impact. So I think that, out of the three, works well. And what we've got here at the bottom is the author name. It's big. 
It's not bigger than the title. You know, God forbid, you don't want it even maybe half as big as the title. So about a third as big as the title works well. And it's clear. And it's all capitals. That works well. You know, people choose it any way they wish, really. You can have it. It's your choice. You know, at the end of the day, it's your choice how you have it. But I'm just trying to give you some advice on on the impact, the visual impact for a customer. And, yeah, I think that uh, that does it. Pairing the fonts is super important too. Just picking the same font, top and bottom, just wouldn't work. Uh, well, I'm not saying you wouldn't sell any books. It's just that you want to sell more books. So to have, say, Arial at the top and Arial at the bottom, or Times New Roman or whatever at the top and same at the bottom, just one in bold and one in italic maybe, wouldn't work. The two fonts ideally are two different fonts, fonts that complement each other. Now let me give you an exa let me give you an example here with Canva because they've got some already set up and there's other apps that do the same sort of thing. So if we go to text, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a few. Let's have a look at this one. These two fonts are completely different, but they've been paired up because paired up professionally. And again, in this particular instance, they've gone for all capitals and Sanchez is the font for the bottom here and League Spartan for the top. Now that means nothing to me and it'll probably mean not a lot to you because we don't really care about that. We just want to know what's we just want to know what's right, don't we? What works. But that kind of works. It's not bad at all. Let's let's pick a different one. Look at that. Happy Valentine's. Let's just make it a little bit more visible. You know, it's a nice fancy text, but clear at the top or for the title, whichever way round you wanted it. You could have it upside down. You know, you don't have to have your name always at the bottom. And again, it's nice and clear, simple text or simple fonts for what would be um, the author name. And we'll go for one more before I carry on. James and Katie invite you to simple text at the bottom, anything you like, as long as it's nice and clear um, for the heading or the title or what, for whatever it is you're using it for. Um, so you can see where I'm coming from now, can't you, with it? You might not always be using this uh, Canva. You might use something else. You might just want to use Word and you might want to find the best fonts for it. So what have we got for that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to fontjoy.com. That's F-O-N-T-J-O-Y.com. It seems quite simple enough. Click generate this one to create a new font pairing and the lock button here to lock fonts that you want to keep. You can change what it is you want here. So if I put the hidden portal and I can generate, okay, I can move this along to balance the contrast between the two. I can generate, see what happens. Generate, let's have a little stab, see what else looks good. That looks good. And if I click on that, it tells me what the, what the font is, designed by Christian Robertson. And these are all the fonts with different styles, like 300, like 300 italic, regular, regular, 400 italic, bold. These are all different styles for the same Roboto condensed. Right, okay, just close that again. So that's the title. This one here is Libra Franklin. I click on that. It says about. Libra Franklin is an interpretation and expansion of the 1912 Morris Fuller Benton classic. Sounds like a car, doesn't it? But it gives us all the details for each font and a font that we might be able to look for in another document like Word. So yeah, that's really, really quite simple to use. And don't worry about these green things. That's my, uh, that's my uh, Grammarly there in the background. So if I was to make a mistake there and just took that out, I get a warning. I have it going through all my software because I really like it. I'm not affiliated to it. I'm not selling you any affiliations, so don't be scared about that. I just like what I like, and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like. So if I was to click on that, hidden, change it, and there we go. 
And can we change these about a bit? We can hit that button there, that looks like a graphic equaliser next to the lock. And yeah, we can just go through there and have a little look, see what might look better. Uh, and just pick our fonts throughout this whole collection. And it will pair with another font. Look at that big chunky thing there. Sniglet 800. Let's have a little look. Oh, that's a lovely font. And if I press generate, this is the one it recommends will go with it. It's fantastic. It's, it's a simple way of getting your fonts right. And so get onto that. It's totally free. You can, you can sign up to a, um, a newsletter if you wish. But, um, or just save it into your um, address bar and use it whenever you wish. But it's giving you everything you need. This text here at the bottom would be what it considers a good idea in the document itself to go with the title and to go with the author name um, or to go with the chapter names. You know, so it's fabulous. So these three fonts together could be the whole three fonts I want to use for my book. So I hope that helps with your, um, your titles, your, your author name, and maybe even the content font. So uh, keep it clear. Don't hide it with the, with the uh, it might be a beautiful, stunning uh, image you have on the cover. But don't let it get in way of the title. People need to see it from a distance and don't clutter it. Don't uh, hide it away. Make it stand out simply. And that goes for your, for your author name. Don't be shy. Put your name out there.